Thank you, everybody. Let me apologize in advance. I don't have any childhood cancer jokes, you sickos. Oh my god. No, it's uh, it's awesome to be here, man. Give it up for your host tonight. This is an awesome show. Let me put it on. I dress my best. I uh, told one comedian, Dale, when I walked in, I go, I never dress this white. And she goes, you look this white all the time. Uh, just a little more aggressive, because it's usually like heavy metal t-shirts, but I wore my only nice shirt tonight for you people, so this is awesome. Let's get down to uh, cancer jokes. So, you know, I didn't have cancer, you know. Uh, I wasn't so lucky, I guess, I, uh, based on that last set. Nothing free for me. Uh, but no, my mom had cancer, right? And, uh, you know, I think we should make this show about her. Do you guys want to talk to my mom a little bit tonight? Yeah! yeah. Alright. I brought this Ouija board. Uh, I put that right there. Uh, let me know if it goes on fire. That happened last time. I summoned a demon once on accident doing these jokes, man. No, it's awesome. Joey asked me a few months ago, she goes, hey, do you want to come and relive the worst eight months of your life for a room full of strangers? And I, you know, I'm a whore for attention, so I said, yes, I would love to do that. Um, my fiance says I have only child syndrome. I have two brothers, so I don't know how that would happen. Um, no, man, this is, uh, it's pretty crazy, though. Like, uh, she basically was like, do you want to roast your mother? Uh, and my mom already was cremated, so I guess practice makes perfect. It's gonna get way darker as this goes. But like, with, when my mom had cancer, I realized cancer can be fun, right? Like, um, there's only two things that happen with, like, where you get talked to. Cancer and pregnant women get talked to a lot alike. People are always asking how far along they are. Uh, <laughs> And my mom was really bad, like she, she would lose her voice from the chemo, and people would be like, oh, you got laryngitis? And she couldn't like warm them up. She'd just go, no, oh, stage four cancer. And then uh, they were giving her free stuff at Kohl's. So she started dropping it everywhere. She told everyone she had stage four cancer, and sometimes people didn't give us anything. They just look at us very uncomfortably. Um, no, but it's like, I, I realize like, there's like crazy things, man. Like you, you learn to grief, Everyone handles grief differently. Um, like, for example, me and my brothers handled it with humor. Um, my dad handled it by posting like a 13-year-old girl on Facebook every day. <laughs> my aunt stole my mother's morphine and joined QAnon. Uh, all of those things are true. Uh, but uh, where it gets even weirder is you realize, like, you know, you ever hear superstitions, like, um, people come to you and change. That's what happens, you know? There's literally millions of dollars on the ground in change, and I'm supposed to believe every time I find a nickel, it's my dead mother. Um, <laughs> but I have an aunt who really believes in that. It's my mom's best friend, she's a lovely lady, my Aunt Linda. She, uh, she'll, like, come on to us when we see her. And she took a lot of my mom's clothes, and she had them tailored to fit her. And she'd go, I'm wearing your mother's dress! And we're supposed to, we just fake excited? But we're really nervous that one day she's gonna come out with a skin mask of my mother. <laughs> like, I'm wearing your mother's face! And I'm like, this is a bit much. And, uh, go back to the quarters. I, I, that was alright, that was a little less intense. Um, I realized, like, my mom smoked a lot, man. She smoked a lot of cigarettes. And I remember she told me the reason she started smoking was it would make her cool. And she fucking was pretty cool. So she might have been like, uh, like I don't, I, I smoke too, but I smoke cigars. Because we got lung cancer in my family. I'm going to make sure it's mouth cancer that gets me. No, no ma'am. I'm not going to let that happen to me. Uh, I realized that like, she was the right age where her, people her age didn't know how to use Facebook when she got sick. Like this, the week she got sick, someone murdered her on Facebook. They just told everyone there was a post with her tag in it saying, so sorry to hear about my friend Mary, may she rest in peace. <laughs> and hundreds of people called her. <laughs> hundreds. To make sure she was dead. She wasn't. She was alive. 
But the best part was she helped. She took a picture holding up a newspaper to prove she was alive. <laughs> And it was some, the, like, the cover was a guy getting life in prison for, like, murdering a family. And she was smiling, holding it up. The picture's way better with no context. It's... But, uh, no, when she passed away, uh, I remember we all were sitting outside. It was really sad. Um, and I ran to the liquor store. My brother ran and got cigars. Me and my brothers and my dad just sat on the front porch. Uh, my aunt and my mom's fiance at the time were outside. They were like sitting quietly. It was real solemn. And then the guy came to get, like from the funeral home, to pick up the body. But he has to come before the van comes. So he pulls up in a brand new two-seater Mercedes. <laughs> um, which I was like, this is going to be way more fun than I thought. <laughs> so he walked up, and we were just over crying. Like, we watched my mom on hospice for eight weeks. It was brutal. So we're like, finally, it's almost like an exhale, like a big exhale. Um, and I remember he walked up, and he knew my mom, so he was a little rattled. And uh, when he came out after he pronounced her dead, I said, um, hey, man, my mom's not going to fit in that car. <laughs> He walked back inside and didn't even look me in the eye. <laughs> but a little while later, he came out again because now the van pulled up. Uh, and I said, hey man, I can go in the garage and get you a Sawzall if you need it. Uh, <laughs> I actually saw the guy eight months later from my grandmother's wake. Uh, yeah, well, you give me all oh, six family members in 18 months. Uh, started with my mom, though, so I like, we started off big and kind of worked our way down. Uh, <laughs> nobody came to get my grandmother's body, and he said, hey, we're going to walk her through the house. Like, do you guys, do you want to go outside? Do you want us to go around back? He went, no, go ahead. And when he was walking through, I said, sir, can I just ask you a quick question? And he goes, oh, God. <laughs> And I said, do you guys go through a lot of Purell? Uh, they do. They go through a lot of like, Purell in his pocket. Uh, no, it's, uh, it was crazy, though. We got to the wake, and you would think that would be more dignified. Um, you'd be wrong. Uh, I just remember we were sitting at the wake, and what we did was we took my mom's cell phone, and we go, this is going to be so much fun. Uh, this is going to be the most fun wake I've ever been to. So there was a line out the door. Uh, I was standing there as a marine. I was standing there in my dress blues. People are all crying when they're seeing my family. So what we immediately did was when we saw people we knew who looked really rattled, we would take my mom's cell phone and call them. <laughs> If you want to see people really shit their pants on the way, if the next time someone you love dies, grab their phone, claim that phone. It could just be your thing. Just pretend you don't have it. We started sending texts. Oh my God. It was great. It was, um, we were shaming people, like, from her phone, and I can't believe you wore that. We asked another one of my aunts to crack the coffin open because she was hot in there. <laughs> it was Long Island in October, it gets steamy. Uh, no, but it was crazy. And then we went through all that. I remember people still didn't know how to act even though we were joking around. Uh, we tried to make it light for people. So my little brother went to like eulogize her at the wake. So I sprinted forward. Uh, when he got everyone's attention, and I said, wait, 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 and I grabbed a chair and walked up and said, mom wants to sit up. <laughs> uh, I'll close it on the last couple ones. Uh, we got, uh, like, we went to the funeral, my mom was Baptist. Any Baptists in here? <laughs> you guys aren't going to love this. So, uh, <laughs> weirdly the most offensive thing in a set of cancer jokes. But no, my mom was Baptist, and uh, the weird thing about this Baptist funeral was they kept asking for money throughout the funeral. But he kept smashing on the casket. We were worried he was going to wake her up. Uh, like, Let her get her eternal rest. Jeez, man. Uh, but then we, she got cremated, so we went to bury her ashes, right? My mother had a daughter who died, and she said, I want to be buried where my daughter's ashes are. We said, okay, we'll, we'll 
fulfill that, but it's in a graveyard where it's just children that were buried there. So we showed up with a group of adults to illegally bury ashes. <laughs> so I had a Marine Corps issued e-tool, dug a tiny hole and put the ashes there. And I go back every year and I leave a bottle of sangria where we bury my mom's ashes. <laughs> which is hilarious because it's a children's cemetery. <laughs> So people are going, what is this, the liquor they were conceived on? What is that? <laughs> you guys have been awesome, man. I'm my college.